I haven't seen the first two Bad Boys movies probably since 2003 in theaters when the second one came out. I enjoyed it quite a bit. It did feel really long though. The movie concludes around the two hour mark, but then for some reason, Michael Bay and company decided we're gonna throw an entirely different movie into this thing, have a fourth car chase, and we'll just keep going. That said, I still really enjoyed the film and the first one quite a bit. Martin Lawrence and Will Smith's uh, characters they just work so well together. The chemistry is fantastic. Plus you have some of the side characters who are talking shit constantly. Thankfully, some of these people return. And for the most part, they are the same characters that we love from, you know, almost two decades ago. Two things I noticed right away. One, the people aren't near sweaty enough for a Michael Bay film, which then made me think, is this not a Michael Bay film? And it's not, it turns out it's not. It was directed by uh, two directors who I were, I'm, I'm unfamiliar with and I would butcher their names if I tried to say them. They did a, a decent job kind of emulating what Bay did before. There's a lot of, you know, the classic camera spins from a low angle. There's, you know, there's some fast jump cuts during action scenes. He gets all the beats right, but there definitely is something missing, I thought. He, he doesn't quite, they, they don't quite have that Michael Bay Midas touch that there's something just kind of off about it all. Michael Bay to me is the equivalent of a Christina Aguilera from the late 1990s to the early 2000s. He makes dirty look good. There's a lot of sweat, there's some blood, there's a lot of violence, but he, he films it in such a pretty way. And in this movie, it's very inconsistent, especially later in the movie when there's this a high speed night scene. That thing is kind of ugly, it's kind of a mess. For the most part though, it's, it's a serviceable job. And it, thankfully our performers are up to the task of bringing these characters back to life. Marcus Burnett and Mike Lowry are back again on the beat, on the streets. I shouldn't say both of them. Martin Lawrence, he's ready for retirement. He's had enough, ready to hang up the badge. Meanwhile, Mike, Will Smith's character, he, he's in it for life. He's a bad boy for life, as they say multiple times in the film. This movie doesn't go 10 minutes without reminding you that they're bad boys. They, they reminisce about the song multiple times. The theme song comes on and people are, are acknowledging the phrase multiple times. It's a bit much. It's a bit much for me. And I, 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 get, I get it. We haven't seen these guys in 17 years. It's nice to remind the audience of, of the mantra, but I, I got it pretty early on. Oddly enough, the, the, the awesome theme song that, that Michael Bay uses to no end in the first two movies is barely present in this one. There's only hints of it sprinkled throughout. And I'd say the music for the most part is a bit of a low note too, which is a shame because Bad Boys have had some pretty awesome music in the past. Will Smith, I'm not sure ages. And if he does, I think the math equation is something like for every eight normal human years, Will Smith ages one. He, he is an impeccable specimen of a human. He, he is what everybody should aspire to be like. Black and large and successful. I know I, I, know I strive for that every day and I'm, I'm failing miserably. Martin Lawrence, however, apparently kept on the big mama's fat suit and it somehow morphed him into a, just a, a fat man. He, he, he's got a lot of water weight up top and I get it, he's old. Age hasn't been kind to him. I'm gonna probably look worse when I get that age. It's just a little jarring to see him here when you, you jump back from the previous century. He's, he's definitely a little bit different. It, it's hard to take him serious when there's serious scenes because he just kind of looks comical. And I don't say the word serious lightly. There's a lot of dramatic elements in this film. There's a lot of scenes that really play up their relationship, their struggles, their loss, and they go for broke on this. And I think it, for the majority of the picture works. There are two things I look for in a bad boys movie. The rapport from our leads, the, the back and forth banter, the swearing, the, the antics. And this movie gets it right pretty much all the time. I like that a lot. They, they still have it. And the other thing is the unabashed action, the, the fantastical car chases, the, the gunfights. And here I think it is lacking a little and it takes a while to really get to it. We have a fun high speed chase to start things out. And then this thing kind of lulls for quite a while. You know, we have to catch the audience back up. We have to get them back into this world, see where some of these different uh, members are at. And yeah, it, I mean, it takes like 45 minutes for this thing to really ratchet. One thing it does well that I think a lot of action movies don't bother with is focusing on the villain. And this movie really does kind of dive into this backstory of this character. And um, there are some twists, there's some turns from all, from all aspects. You, you, you know, people go down that you don't expect to. 
there, there's reveals along the way that I was like, okay, well, we're, we're going here with things. All right. Well, and I was on board. I thought, I thought the script was, was tight. And besides the, you know, the nostalgia with, with the, with the phrase, it does it, it does its justice. I don't know what this thing is reviewing at. I don't bother with reviews anymore. I can't really trust anything these days, it seems. So I just have to go off of my own opinion and I hope some of you do too and respect it. Um, I think this is worth seeing. If you're a fan of the franchise, you're not gonna be disappointed. I don't think it's as good as the first two, but once again, I haven't seen them since, since like 2003. So maybe I have a little bit of the blinders on. I feel like they're pretty solid though. Really well directed. Michael Bay, love him or hate him. The guy knows how to film action and he makes it look pretty. So, um, you know, kudos to the new directors if, if they continue with the next film, because I'm sure there's gonna be a fourth. I did see that this movie is doing really well at the box office and I'm happy for that. I think that it, it's well earned. Oftentimes when you try to dig up a property like this, it just, it just does not work at all. You know, Dumb and Dumber 2 was miserable. Zoolander 2 was trash. I, I just, I can't really think of a property where it's come back and it's been even a shell of its former self. I'm really hoping Ghostbusters can can kind of relive some of the glory days, but I don't have high hopes yet. I didn't really mention any of the new characters in this because I just don't care. I, I like bad boys for Will Smith and Martin Lawrence, so that's it. Although notable exception is Vanessa Hudgens is in this. I wasn't sure if it was her at first. God, I, lo I love women that do that cool thing with the side of their hair, the, the, the hip new trend to shave like half of it off on the side and kind of comb over, or just do whatever they want. It's 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 awesome. She does it. I wasn't sure if it was her at first. I think I called it uh, like halfway through. I'm like, I think that's Vanessa Hudgens. I don't know what she's doing in this movie, but she's doing it for me and she's awesome. Uh, that, that There's like a whole ragtag crew of new members. They work for this ammo group. Um, they're kind of the the new class of, of, of uh, cops. They're fun. They're, they're, a good ra they're a good addition. I liked them. Anyway, that's my thoughts on the film. Let me know if you saw it in the comments below. It's been out for a few days now. I'm, I'm not in a hurry to get reviews out anymore. I just want to I just want to have fun with this, talk about movies like I used to and not worry so much about the um, the rigmarole on YouTube and what they're doing. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you liked it. And if you did, feel free to subscribe if you haven't to Adam Does Movies. It's my main channel here on YouTube. If you really like what I'm doing, I have a second one called Adam Olinger. It talks about more than just movies. I, I, I rant about kind of random issues that have no real consequence, like leaving your shopping cart out in the middle of the parking lot or getting screwed on a coffee size or just something just ridiculous, you know, kind of first world problems. Um, I, I, I do have a couple skit shows over there, like The Cringe, where I play a comical character. It's fun, it's dumb, it's loose, and we're, we're having a good time. So yeah, subscribe to both if you want, and I'll see you next time.